Hopefully, I'm not just coming through the left speaker. <laughs> I made that beat. Yeah. Humble hey. Underhand presents Mr. Huh, chopping it up with the homies. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Today, we yeah. got uh, my brother from another mother. What show? My kids call him Uncle Rome. Yeah. <laughs> Only Rome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows Wayne Beats over there. Uh, and they killing. I don't know, man. What up? The world, I'm just living in. <laughs> so if I had one of your hand, I cut both mine off. You know how I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what you got. I don't know, man. What are we gonna continue? We gonna continue on goals or yeah, what? We're we'll gonna talk. Yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah, we just talking before you got here. We we're talking about goals and I don't know. You got any goals, man? You want to put out and, in the universe? And we were man, talking about or? like the importance of goals and like you know like different things to you know. Achieve them. I stay with goals, you know. All right, let me get close. I stay with goals. At the end of my goal right now is by October the 1st to stack 50K. Mm. Right? But a goal is just a dream if you ain't working the plan. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, you know, my, you know, you know my daughter. I had to learn that when it, the goal thing, you know what I do now? I got a board at my house. Mm-hmm. I write down whatever I'm trying to do that year, you know, like at the top. Mm -hmm. I put all 12 months on the board, but all the days, there's something in those days, three things I got to do every day. You know, so I break yeah. it down like, here's the top goal. Well, here's the monthly goal. Well, inside that month is 30 days. So yeah. I got 30 days to get the monthly goal. When yeah. I get the monthly goal done by the end of the 12 months. The main thing I want to do should get done. So it's on me every day to scratch off something. Yeah, but if I don't get whatever I'm supposed to get done, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. I go back and I look. What did I miss? Mm. You know what I mean? It's well, you know me well enough. No, I used to always say I want to do this. I want to do that, and mm -hmm. I'm all over the place. I never had focus. Right. Yeah. But I, I got to where I started listening to uh, like the self help. Not even the self help. I go on YouTube and go like, okay. Yeah. And you know, everybody got something on YouTube where they say, oh, you can mm -hmm. do this, you can do. It. Ah, one the one common theme I saw for people who really, really made it, they always said they wrote it down. Yeah. And help and it's true, when you write it down, you see it, it's real. Yeah. So now the accountability falls on me when I see that board every day. Wow. And believe it or not, man, I come up. Yeah. And and you know, I try to get my kids and and the dude, I got some young dudes I deal with a lot. I try to get them on that. Hey, man, don't just say it. Write it down. Because mm -hmm. if you don't write it down, you ain't going to see it. If you don't see it, it ain't real. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. Yeah, we were just talking about that. And I was saying, like, it's important to write it down. Vision boards are good for people. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and I was saying, like, uh, visualizing it. You know what I mean? Like, seeing it. Like, you know, take a little time to just close your eyes and, like, like how you said, you know, you got the monthly goals, and that le leads to the big goal at the end of the year. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, and I'm and uh, with the visualization, a lot for me is like I like to uh, do like the same type of things, but uh, well now anyway, because I used to be like you said, no focus. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, um, but uh, the end of the year thing, like I still keep it in mind though. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I'll think about it, but that's not like. That's like the main goal, but you have like these other goals though. The, the end of the year goal is the big picture. Right. But the big picture is cool once you write it. Everything else is. But I don't look at, like you said, I don't look at the big picture. I look at the daily picture. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the big picture don't count until I get there. Mm -hmm. So if I keep looking at the big picture, I'm not going through the steps. Right. And and like you said with the vision board, you can tell you why I, I never did vision boards. I see people do the vision boards, but they, they put them somewhere. Mm hmm. The board I have is a like a eraser. Yep. So, and I don't have a TV on the wall. Yeah. I got the board. So when yeah. I wake up in the morning, the first thing I see is my board. Right. Here go the funny thing. Then, you know, like I see people see me now, they say, oh, no. you know how they think I got the car and I'm doing all this, that, and the third. And I laugh because I'm going, okay, to y'all this look easy and it look good. Yeah. 
I'm a realist. I went for, and this is, the, you know, we just keep it real. I'm only inspired by three people, period. Yeah. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know that sound crazy. Yeah. Myself. My youngest daughter. And this dude right here. Because, see, well, you know, I used to live here. Yeah. This room we in was like the living room for me. Yeah. It was the bedroom. Yeah. You know, people, people, people always go, you know, from the outside looking in, everybody, oh, wrong. You know, you always, oh, bro. You know what? I slept in this man's basement. You remember I was driving the Crown Vic? Yeah. How, how many, how many jobs did I go through to try to get the job that I needed? <laughs> I mean, for real. It was yeah. like every three months. Yeah. I'm switching up. Yeah. The bad part is, is the whole time I'm doing this, that, and the third. Have you, do, you, do you ever wake up knowing that you ain't doing what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, for me, it's like I'm going, damn, I'm spinning my wheels. Mm-hmm. I'm spinning my wheels. Because I'm looking at too much and everything else. I'm out focus. I'm going through it with my ex-wife. Trying to make sure my kid is straight, mm. you know. And I'm going, man, what's going on? Some, how am I missing? What am I missing that everybody else got? Mm-hmm. Then I'm going. Then one day it dawned on me, like, damn, I'm living in Micah's basement. Me and this dude met what 2000, mm, one, yeah, two, two, uh, yeah, like two thousand, like, something right, like that. I was, and Maybe I got 2001 because I got home mm. March 5th, 2001. So I'm going. The, the crazy thing is, I'm going, one day I looked, I was like, damn. I remember when Micah. Man, we've been friends for like 20 years. Yeah, over 20 years. <laughs> That's crazy. And I'm going, you had to know how I first met him. The first time I really met him, I'm working at the car dealership. Oh, yeah. Man. Dude jump out. Some things happen. Yada, yada, yada. We won't even get in it. No, I'm we like, can talk about it. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't believe little people. Man, I got them paws, boy. Oh, yeah, he jumped out. He jumped a dude at the car deal. Shit. <laughs> he was on the job. job. He come to deliver something. I had them hands. Pop, 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 pop. And I'm laughing. Because I'm telling him. And this dude grabs me. I grabbed him. Break. I said, man. And I told the dude, he beat the brakes off you, bro. Yeah. I said, I'm laughing. We wouldn't have got him, man. It's, and I'm going in my mind. See, I don't think white and black. I'm going, this dude. That's yeah. how we met. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm laughing. That's how we met. I'm going, man, he got hurt. Boy, you, you, you whooped him. You know? <laughs> just go ahead and get in the truck and go on back. Man, you got it. Yeah. A few years later, I'm working with him at DHL. Yeah. This is, people laugh. I don't believe in coincidence. Right. I believe when you meet somebody, I don't know if you ever read the book, The Celestine Prophecy. It's crazy. Mm-mm. He know I'm not a big, I don't, go, I believe in God, but I don't go to church every Sunday. My mom was with it. Yeah. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, yada, yada, yada. She gave me a book called The Celestine Prophecy years ago. She's passed now. And it says no people meet without, it's not a coincidence. And there's a knowledge you're supposed to give and take. That book, I stuck with me. And stuff in the book, I'm going, man, I'm at this dude this way. Then I just ran back into him. And we've been linked. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I tell people? Everybody for you ain't with you, and mm-hmm. everybody with you ain't for you. Me and this dude ain't got to talk every day, every week, every month. We can go six months a year without speaking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if he call me, I'm dropping what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I know if I call him, he dropping what he's doing. And people be laughing. They be like, but man, you you didn't grow up with him. You don't have to. Mm-hmm. I had to drive to Kentucky to get you. Yeah, yeah everything. Because <laughs> he got a flat tire. I was yeah. like, man, why did I answer the phone? <laughs> he probably was. Yeah, I was but like, I watched him. <laughs> I watched him go from from step A to step B. Huh. C. I mean, I watched him and Becca literally grind it out. People laugh, but I watched. I saw from from mm-hmm. the giddy up. Yeah, I'm going. But the funny thing was, is this dude told me he was going to do this, that, and the third. Right? Yeah. You know, and he, let's be real. We all say we're going to do stuff. He don't heard me say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. A lot of times, what I said, I fell off to the wayside. Yeah. Oh, dude. He walked it down. And I'm sitting here like, well, damn. But Michael walking down. And it ain't got nothing to do with age because I'm way older than him. I'm like, man, this young cat can walk it down. Man, you like a half a century old. <laughs> yeah, I'll be 53. I just make it look good. Yeah. <laughs> I watched him walk down what he said he was going to do. Yeah. 
So if he can walk it down, why can't I walk it down? Yeah. Okay. My daughter was one of the top basketball players in the state. She quit, picked up a volleyball. Boom. Because I'm like, she walked it down. If my daughter can walk down what she want to do, if a man can walk down what he want to do, why can't I? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you, know, and you know, I at one point I did walk it down. I had to, when I had to, when I was doing the parties and stuff, like mm-hmm. I said, nobody else was doing it. I walked it down. So that's why I say me, him, and my daughter. Because my thing is, is what is it? You want to say it's women? <laughs> yeah. You could be that. That is, and I'm just too real. Like, if you ask me something, that's what I'm, I'm going to tell you. The, I'm going to tell you what I think, and it ain't going to be no cut on it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So, we were talking about the goals. You said you wanted to save X amount of dollars. Is that like a, what are you going to do with it? Why would you just save the money? Is it like, I'm going to save, I'm going to get to this goal, and then I got options from another goal? Yeah, the 50 is, I want to move back to Nashville. So mm-hmm. I live in Kentucky. Yeah. Well, I know I can't, Nashville ain't cheap no more, even if I live, live like on the outskirts. So I got to have 50 and then 25 if I want to buy a condo and I got to have the money put up mm-hmm. to where I'm safe in case something happens. So that that 50 allows me to get back home. Mm-hmm. You know. So the big goal is to get home, but right. to get home, you need to have this. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got to walk it down. Mm-hmm. You know. And, and so shoot. it's good to find a big goal. Yeah, because if I shoot for 50. And figure out how to get to that goal. I shoot for 50 in five months, right? Mm-hmm. Here go the kicker. I'm a realist. I overshoot what I really need. Yeah. Because that way, if I'm shooting for the 50 and I really need 25. Right. Mm-hmm. But if I get to 50 and I know 25 is the real. Yeah. Shoot for the moon. If you if you miss, you're still going to be in the stars. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's gonna, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was yeah. in the car business. People laugh. When you negotiate, you negotiate anything you do in life, you negotiate high because somebody's going to try and get you down. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We meet in the middle. We both win. Mm-hmm. Life is win win. Yeah. If me and you do, if any, we sitting right here and we do a deal, if you don't win and I don't win, somebody going to feel cheated and we ain't going to be friends no more. Right. So let's meet in the middle. Everybody win, everybody happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like if you meet a girl, you might end up with a wife, a home, and some kids. A dog, hey man, <laughs> you know. See, you know what I'm problem. saying? I ain't meet yeah. no girls. You know, no all the things you wanted. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, yeah. I don't meet girls no more. <laughs> I don't. I mean, women, <laughs> grandmas. You mean? Watch this. <laughs> you meet grandmas. grandmas. I, don't meet, I don't meet women. I don't meet, <laughs> I don't meet females. I meet life partners. What I mean by that yeah. is this: he meets I, grandmas. Well, yeah, because I'm a granddad. <laughs> This dude talking. You know, you ain't fall, he got some grown kids. He ain't fall. Keep playing. Yeah. I'm going to see you on the new. Michael, man, he's going to be a granddaddy. Yeah. Drove pulling up at the nursing home. No, but you know, I made, I made mistakes. Speed dating. When I was young, I would date women, like date girls or date women, and waste months and years with playing. Mm-hmm. Now, I go on with a, if we go on a date, or even before we go on a date, we don't talk. Because, I need to know what I'm dealing with. Are you a modern woman or a traditional woman? Did your standards drop now that you got older? No, you know, here's the thing. They didn't even change. Or you're dealing with I changed. Got higher stand higher nope. standards. None of it none of I got the same standards. Here's the difference. Now I voice it. We, mm-hmm. and I think we all do that. As men, we know what we want, but we scared to say it up front to a woman. Yeah. In my twenties I knew I want yeah. a woman I want a woman who's a woman. I don't want somebody I got to compete with or argue with. Yeah. No, nah, I want somebody who we compliment each other. Yeah. You know? I wouldn't say, well, not really competing, but, you know, when you inspire each other. Yeah, but it's a lot of dudes. See, you got that. And and, mm-hmm. I'm, and this going to sound crazy, but it's a lot of dudes who go home and when they walk in the door, they, they could be married or be, or be with a girl. She always talking about what she did as mm-hmm. opposed to what we did. Mm-hmm. See, I don't deal with me. I deal with if we. Don't, if I'm not on a we, 
level with a woman. And I, and I mean, I literally go like this. What kind of woman are you? If you're a traditional woman, then guess what? That's, we really going to get along. Because as a man, my job is to protect and provide. And it ain't too many traditional women. Right. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I think 80% of the women now don't know how to cook. Don't know how to. T- when I say. And it's not saying that it's a woman's place to do all that. Because I right. don't help when I come home. Like, I know you. Mm-hmm. When you come home, you cook, you help. Mm-hmm. But the ma- we all have roles, defined mm-hmm. roles. Now, if she's a traditional woman, my job is to protect and provide. Pro- people have providing that messed up. Providing doesn't mean a million dollar house. Providing means we have a roof over our head. The What we need. Mm-hmm. It's the excess that gets people in trouble. No, baby, when you say protect and provide, that means I'm going to make sure everybody in my family and my house straight. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make sure the home is taken care of. But we don't have to have a million dollar house to be provided for. Mm-hmm. Even clothes. We don't have to have name brand clothes. Come on, man. You got clean clothes on your back, three square meals, a roof over your head. You're provided for. Mm-hmm. He's an institutionalized. Uh, that's, yeah, that, that's what I am. But that's, am I, am nah, I kidding though? No, no, no. Mike gonna hit me with them crazy jokes, but he knows I'm right. No, no, no. it's true. And of course, you know what I'm saying. You, you yourself, <clears throat> you yourself want to uh, do, like provide better anyway, mm-hmm. and you'll do that anyway exactly. as it presents itself. But as y'all work as a team and get there, mm-hmm. you know I'm not gonna what I'm put saying? myself in the hole. But like this, every, if you, I bet you have. You can't start from the bottom if you ain't been from the bottom. Yeah. But here's the thing. Everybody want instant gratification. Mm-hmm. Guess what? You think I'm going to sit here and go buy a half million dollar house when I know I can only afford a hundred thousand dollar house? Right. I'm going to put myself in a hole mm-hmm. for people to see, to make it look good, that don't care about me, but as right. soon as I fall off, they're going to talk? Right. Nah, I ain't doing that. Yeah. If that's what she owned, she yeah. with the wrong dude. Yeah. Now, if you're a modern woman, I love it. Because you know what? These, these women nowadays talking about I'm strong, independent, I don't need a man. Then guess what? You're a modern woman. That's what that means. I'm gonna treat you like a modern woman. That means you're gonna pay half the bills. Yeah. Uh don't expect me to open your door. I we going to lunch or dinner. You modern. You can take care of yourself. Half is yours, half is mine. That's yeah. how we doing it. Open up my door. Man, what you said. <laughs> that, I mean, and people, ah oh, man, it, no, no, no. You can't expect me to be a traditional man and you're a modern woman. So you want the benefits without having doing anything? No, I ain't playing that game. I've said that before too, man. Because you get these women that are like, you know, young and pretty, and they're like, um, "Oh man, I want everything." Like you got to bow down and do all this stuff. I want you to, but then they want to like run that mouth and complain mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. And it's like, whoa, 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 you can't do mm-hmm. both. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's give and take. Yeah. Okay. Say, I'm, I'm, and I'm like, just anybody who looking now, nah, I'm not rich. Don't get it twisted. But just say, if I if I had money, like that kind of money, where I could just whatever she want, right? Cool. But she's gonna know up front. That with, with getting whatever you want comes cooperative, mm-hmm. kindness, and a place. Right. That means it's not. It's no longer a democracy. We ain't voting about nothing. Right. It's, that, it's a dictatorship. That's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. Like, and I think those women in those positions don't understand that. That's what I mean. Like, they go to, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold up. <laughs> If I'm doing all of this and now you're doing this, well, you could go, you know what I mean? Because you're not playing your uh, position right there. In life, whether it's work, family, whatever, if it ain't beneficial, it's artificial. Mm. So women are are distractions to your goals. No. No, 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 no. They can be. Uh, hold on. Oh, I, yeah. I'm dating somebody right now, right? She'll tell you before we even went on our first date, we had discussion about what she expect what I expect because I'm too old to play games I got more time behind me than in front of me and even when you're young if I knew this if I thought if somebody if I had a father or a male figure who could have pulled me aside and told me at a young age it's wrong find you a good girl who gonna work with you mm-hmm. that understands that your house is your peace mm. mm-hmm. you know that understands that y'all, you have goals she has goals but y'all supposed to have goals together mm-hmm now imagine it at 18, 21, or 25, somebody told you that and you met that one and you looked for that woman and you found that woman. Where would you be at right now? Right. As opposed to the time that, yeah. that you wasted mm-hmm. playing around. Because mm-hmm. I'll tell you now, at 52, almost 53, I wasted even being married. And it's no offense to my ex wife because she is a good person for somebody else, but not right. for me. 
it's when you find that person, and, and it's that love stuff means nothing to me. Feelings can change. Loyalty and respect are what count. Because see, you can love me and kill me. But mm. if you respect me and you're loyal to me, you don't want to see me hurt myself. Nobody hurt me. And you don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. If you loyal, even if something that hurt mm. you, this is like with him. Loyalty, people think it's a joke. Loyalty is not what just being there. Loyalty to me is he said stuff to me that my own family didn't have the heart to say, but it was real. Right. It might have pissed me off and it might have hurt, but I needed to hear it and it was honest. Right. See, the people around you always telling you, yeah, don't worry about it. No, no, people don't care. Mm -hmm. it's the, that ain't loyalty. Mm -hmm. That's called convenient waiting for something to benefit. I'm saying, yes, man. Mm -hmm. Loyalty is that them people who ain't got to be in your presence, they can be watching from a distance and go like this. Hey, wrong. I see what you're doing. That ain't for you. You better than that. Mm -hmm. Change up what you're doing. Knowing that I might be like, man, why are you trying to tell me what to do? Mm -hmm. But I know it's out of love. It's right. Out of love and it's real. As opposed to the people who with me. Man, forget that. Keep, man, let's keep moving. Because mm -hmm. from my background, I'll be honest with you. He know this, and this is just as real as it get. At any point in time in this lifespan since I've been since I've been home, and you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to go take a vacation. Do you know at any point in time I can pick up the phone, call somebody, and be back in my old life, mm -hmm. major way? Mm -hmm. We're going to keep it real. Two reasons I ain't done it. My daughter and him. Trust me. And I think about the same thing. We we done had these conversations. <laughs> Every day. I don't know if y'all know who uh, Jay Prince is. Yeah. Jay Sounds Prince, familiar. Jay Prince said the two, this man we've never met, but he said something profound that killed me a few years back. Shout out to Jay Prince if you ever, somebody tag him in this because he need to know he inspired people. Every day we get two things, a chance and a choice. Mm-hmm. Prince said that, and I'm laughing because the first thing that came to my mind was conversations that we had about, man, you know how easy every day it would be for us to go back to that. Right. Moment. We got a chance to do it, but we make choices not to. Yeah. The grind is harder, mm -hmm. but it's smarter now. Because mm -hmm. if you can make a – in my case, if you can, if I can make $3 million dirty, I can make $3 million clean. It just take longer to get to the spot. Yeah. But, man, I get to sleep every day good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No stress. Mm, peace. And what do I tell everybody? They say, Jerome, what you doing? I'm staying sucker free in a world full of lollipops. <laughs> and they're making dum dums and blow pops every day. Mm -hmm. My circle so small, that's why my vision is so big. Yeah. And mm. and I don't I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't even like I don't like ninety percent of the people that I come in contact with. Yeah. But I'm still gonna be respectful mm -hmm. and nice. Right. Because it don't hurt me. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, I got to argue with a gay dude not too long ago, right? Mm -hmm. I ain't homophobic. People don't even know what homophobic means. Homo is from the word homo sapien, people. Right. Phobic means scared. They're actually two words that people put together. I'm not scared of no gay dude. My uncle was one of the men who raised me, John Howard Cosby, passed. He was gay. Mm -hmm. I love my uncle. I didn't like his lifestyle. Right. I didn't condone it, but I love him. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't come in my house with that. Because mm -hmm. if I let my uncle come around my kids with that, I'm condoning his behavior. Now, I don't go to church every Sunday. I read the Bible. I believe in God. I know it ain't right. So guess what? My uncle knows I love you, but you can't have this around my kids. Mm -hmm. You can't have it around me. Because if you do, I'm complicit in the behavior that you do. Mm. No different than if I'm hanging around dudes on the street and selling drugs. Right. I'm being complicit and condoning the behavior. Been there, done it. No, it's not right. People don't want to take that into account. Everybody, mm. oh, you gay bashing. No, I'm not. First of all, I wouldn't even know you was gay if you don't tell me. Right. So, who wrong? And now, being a man, straight man, we gonna be the ones on Dr. Phil, Oprah, the view, the good morning America, the next five years going like this. Well, I'd like to tell.
tell the world, you know, uh, I'm straight. Mm-hmm. I'm heterosexual. Like, it's going to be a coming out part. <laughs> and I mean, it offends some people, but it's the truth. Yeah. It's no different than racism. There's no such thing. I'm going to tell the world, there ain't no such thing as racism. And anybody who say it is, I, I bet them that it ain't. Because if you, if you went to school, if you're smart, and I know we're getting off topic, but here's the thing. If you, how many races they tell you it is in school? Mm. They tell uh, you. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, one. I remember hearing it's about. Only, it's only one race, the human mm-hmm. race. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Think about it. You've uh, never heard uh, people, the, the government tell you the races are different. You know, there's different races. Yeah. Scientific and in school, you learn that there's only one race. It's right. The human race. Right. Okay. Now, are we all culturally different? Right. You're damn skippy. Yeah. We different. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. I'm never going to, I don't just, when, when I speak of Micah, everybody crack up because I say my brother, don't I? Yeah. But they, I don't describe you. I mean, you know, my kids call you uncle. I yeah, mean, I, but like, I never describe people as, you know, Micah, Micah, my white brother. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's, a, that's a mindset. No, he, my brother's my brother. If I don't tell you what he is culturally, then you don't know. Yeah. So if the second we all quit, think about how many times when you've had to describe your friends. I show up and they're like, Rome, you said yeah. it was your brother and it's a white kid. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, <laughs> think. Of, I mean, we don't think about it consciously, but how many times have you ever described a person of a different culture to your friends of a different culture? And you have to say, this is my black, you know, the black guy. Yeah. Or, or, see, the second you eliminate that, free because you don't look at it like dang I mean mm-hmm. there's no joke try it for 30 days just not using culture or race to define somebody and look at the people around you and watch what happens then they're going to start looking at you like now they want you to be definitive because if you say uh, well don't even say Michael just say you know my buddy uh, Michael mm-hmm. and you just talk about Michael look at the ones who ask you is he black or is he white then you got to ask yourself, why does it matter? Yeah. It's just like when I meet a woman or a new group of people, you're going to think what I'm about to say. Y'all, you're going to trip over this one, Michael. You ready? Mm-hmm. When you meet somebody new, people in general, what's the first thing they ask you? I, before your name sometimes, what's the first thing they ask? What do you do? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Why do you think they ask you that? I don't even answer that question. They want to define you by what you do. They want yeah. They want to define you and determine how much respect to give you based on what you do. Yeah. I don't even answer the question because mm-hmm. I ask, why does it matter? Man, that's, that's funny. I go to <laughs> I go to this small group and uh, I'll tell people, I mean, people in there, a couple people in there know what I do for a living. But I go in there, I don't say nothing. I'm just tattooed. And this is a prayer group, small Bible study group I go to. There's some older guys in there, and they all look at me a certain way. One of them, they kind of tried to joke about tattoos, and none of you know they're older guys, they're sixties <laughs> maybe, some fifty, forty five. I mean, some older guy. But then when they found out what I did for a living, changed me. Changed mm-hmm. how they look at me, and I'm just like, man, Ask I like questions. to, I like to to guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now they treat me different. And when they didn't know what I did. And, and here's the funny thing. He I never, I, I never tell people what I did for I him. don't even think that he realized this back in the day. He used to make fun of me all the time <laughs> about, the, about the way I dressed. Because mm-hmm. I've always wore, tell, yeah. I, I always wore, I always was a polo khaki. I mean, if you if you he, saw me, you he, would think I was a, a preppy. Uh, he dressed kid. like Carlton. Okay. <laughs> I just that's what I just yeah, He's just like Carlton. See, it's casual it's to me. <laughs> casual <laughs> yeah. business ready. And even yeah. but what did everybody tell you from the hood though? Because I grew up in North Nashville. Mm-hmm. And the projects. What do they say? I always dress like that. Mm-hmm. All, but the funny thing be, if you look at me and you go, I got a square, I got a lane, which I don't mind being called a square or lane, because mm-hmm. if that's your perception, cool. I know who I am. I'm not worried about that. But at the same time, See, you think that the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. So for me, growing up, I stayed polo khaki. Even all through, he'll tell you, I've I been the most casual dude. You would look at me and think I was a businessman or a college student or a square, straight out of the suburbs, right? Mm-hmm. 
But then when we hanging out, he he pull up. Back in the day before, you know, he pull up gold grill, bag it. I mean, I, one night we went to the bar. We I, they met me out at the bar. Remember that night? And hey, they wasn't gonna let you in. You and yeah. everybody in. They wasn't gonna let them in. He wasn't gonna let me based in. based on how they looked. Because how I was dressed. They, hold on, this is on the Bumbrium. Yeah. Over in, in Midtown in the go. Yeah. They, they ain't letting him in. They ain't letting me in. They looking at him like, and, they, and I mean, I'm cracking up. So you wrong. I said, like, no, he with me. I'm like, I'm, I got on khakis, shorts, and a polo, but I got on like dicky shorts <laughs> and yeah. like a 3X polo. They're yeah. like, no, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> nah, you're not going in there. <laughs> and, it, and it's so funny because they looking at him like he the gangster. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all white people. Yeah. I'm over here, and he was, he was messing with me the whole night. It's like Halloween. Somebody's in there with a chicken suit on, and I can't come in. He can't yeah. walk in the door, and I'm laughing. <laughs> and we like, like, <laughs> like man, they ain't going to let me in. But you know. I'm like, but. But they used to get it so twisted because they looking at Micah mm. and they going, oh, man, this dude is a street dude. And I'm going, y'all don't even get it. Mm. Y'all don't even know what this dude do for a living. He's one of the smartest cats on the planet. Then you're looking at me and you're going, oh, he dressed casual. Cool. And I'm going, hell, I'm still on federal parole. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, I just beat a dude up in the parking lot. That's why yeah. I called him. I'm like, and I'm going, this boy, it was <laughs> we, that night I just beat a dude up in the parking lot. But if you looked at me, you'd be like, nah, and I'm going, that, this is the old me. And I'm going, <laughs> what kind of? No, uh, you know, I, keep, I stay on go. But I, it, was, it was so funny because I'm going, they won't let Micah in because they think he finna kill somebody. I just whooped the dude in the parking mm-hmm. lot, and they giving me the red carpet treatment. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, he saved lives every mm-hmm. day. And you know, given the moment of the day, you make me mad, you might lose yours. And I'm going, this is so crazy. And we, me and Mike are coming home. We Like, we came home when we get in the car. We laughing. Because it's like, he used to always go, you know what you used to say, man, it's role reversal, man. I should have been the black dude. <laughs> I'm going, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because everywhere we go, they look at you funny and they treat me like, hey, come on, guy. And I'm like, yeah. I love it. And it's funny. You would think with my mom being a church lady, me growing up having to go to church until I was old enough to make the decision not to, now it's role reversal. I believe in God. I believe in, I mean, my roots is my roots. But now I look at Mike and I'm like, people laugh because he dedicated. You know, when I say dedicated. I like when we, uh, when, when we, get, when we went to uh, Holiday World. Oh, my God. <laughs> you should have came. It was the most In Indiana? Oh, uh-huh. man. I took my whole family, sisters, brothers, we all at heart. Man, we had a yeah. whole floor, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think my dad never, my dad came down, my sisters came down. Yeah. But yeah. then we like <laughs> meet in the lobby. And I'm like, I can't believe y'all would let people like this in here. And he starts yelling, oh, man, these white people everywhere. Oh, and that, God. like they start, they're finna call the police, and we're just kind of joking. Yeah, hey, we're all together, and, and we like, all go sit at a big table to eat. It's crazy. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're like, y'all scared. know each other. And we're like, yeah, man, that's my brother. They were like, scared to death because they thought it was finna be some kind of. I mean, you got twenty brothers. You know, it's my. I mean, my, it's my sister, her husband, their kids. My younger sister, her. You know, he, uh, it was. But it yeah. was crazy. Mom was there, everybody. everybody was there. Yeah. I mean, we in a sprint of van. And, and man, me and Mike are just joking. And every man, them people were scared. And I'm going, and for a minute, I'm like, these people, we in Santa Claus, Indiana, you know, Indiana kind of. It's borderline. Yeah, they, they, well, we was in the, we was in the country. Yeah, boy. That <laughs> there was, wasn't nothing around. And we had to literally go, no, nah, we just playing. It was, it was like, <laughs> and the funny thing is, he the one tattooed up. Why y'all looking at me? <laughs> we cool, brother. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we got off topic, but, yeah, the gold thing. That's how good mm. what we do around here. You know, yeah. I'm just a I'm, – I'm, I'm just – I don't care politically. I'm retarded, you know. Mm-hmm. I hate – excuse me, hate that. I dislike that everything is so touchy. Somebody mm-hmm. told me in public, Jerome, you can't use the word retarded. Mm-hmm. Why not? He retarded. <laughs> what do you mean you can't call him retarded? Did he ride the short bus in school? Did he sit? Mm-hmm. Did he go in, in the building that was way in the back where it was five students in the class and they were still using coloring books? Yeah, then he was mm-hmm. retarded. Yeah. Did he? Okay. Did he catch the short bus? So you can't say he my cousin. He retarded. I don't care what y'all say. Yeah. I can say he retarded. Oh, that's wrong. You got to call him mentally challenged. 
don't that still mean retarded? Yeah. Everybody mm-hmm. want to say something so nice. They want to change wordings to make stuff nice. Okay, guess what? If I call a dude, I forget, I'm like David Spell. If I say, to, hey, man, you're a faggot. Yeah, but oh, my God, you can't say that. Okay? So if I say he gay, can't say that. Mm-hmm. He lives an alternative lifestyle. That's okay. Don't they all mean the same thing? I mean, they do. And not only that, I was going to say uh, the uh, the faggot word is like, didn't they make that word like back in the day or was it? Well, well ask yourself, if I can't say faggot, well, you, we can't say faggot, right? But we can say nigga all day. As a matter of fact, you can say nigga on TV, in music or whatever, and nobody mad. Yeah. If you put the word faggot in, in a song, on TV or whatever, oh my God, we going to cancel. Everybody want to cancel you. Well, guess what? So? That's what Chappelle said recently, mm-hmm. too. People don't even know what the word, first of all, I know gay people who call each other faggot. They can do that, okay? Just like black people can call each other nigger, right? And women can call each other bitches. What? what? Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. Now, here's the funny thing. But if you say it. But if you say <laughs> yeah. it, or he uh-huh. say it, it's a problem. <laughs> now, I'm going I'm to I'm hip the world to something that nobody ever wants to admit when they come to the word nigger or thug. I'm an old head. Go back and look when we used to spell it. Even when you saw it on, go back and look at Tupac when he had the hat on. It said N dot I dot G dot G dot A dot, right? Thug had T dot H dot U dot G dot. You know what it stood for? It wasn't like it is now. Thug, anybody could be a, a thug or a nigga. Why? Because thug stands for true homie under God. Nigga stands for never ignorant getting goals accomplished. Anybody who don't like me saying that, I mm. dare you to prove me wrong. Because if you go back to the 80s, that's how we spelled it. That's how it looked. So he could be my thug nigga. You could be my thug nigga. Had nothing to do with what culture you were. It had to do with who you were right here. See, if you're about your business and you and you correct and getting your doing your thing, we you're a nigga. A thug? True mm-hmm. homie under God. That means you believe in something higher than yourself. Because everybody, think about this. And I, I don't care when people get mad. Even the people in the church. Everybody ain't connected to something. So you, I got buddies right now who go to church. And I'm not talking about him. I got other buddies I know who go to church every Wednesday, every Sunday. They do all the dickens and everything. Just keep it real. Everything. Bro, y'all, ain't, come on, man. Y'all don't believe that. Because if you believed it, I'm going to be honest with you. Most people I know, I'm going to say 60, 70% of the people I know who believe in God don't go to church. But they got more moral and uh, standing than a lot of people that I know. The only reason I even started going to church again when I go is because of him and Becca. Mm-hmm. And I and, and they'll tell you, I, I, my sister will tell you, man, I'm not going on holiday. Man, I, I'm not doing none of that. Why? What was the first thing I told you? Man, I see how fake these people be, man. I, I'm watching people every day in church when you go on Sunday, and I see them during the week. Come on, man, stop that. I, and I'm not saying you got to be perfect, but because you write a tie check and say, oh, I, I'm sorry, that don't mean you godly matter of fact i see the dudes out in the street who when i say godly or or you believe in god they got a certain moral code that they connected to god for real that they go you know what i can't let this happen or i can't do that and i'm gonna speak from a man point of view i know more dudes in the church who cheat than dudes on the street Mm -hmm. but they go to church every sunday they wear suit and tie so they good that's crazy guess what most of the women I know that I've met who are church going girl, women, you know, I don't date them no more. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. They got more rebellion in them than, than than you can imagine. But they supposed to be the good good. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll be honest. And it, well, this is just keeping it real. Okay. If it wasn't for dudes like him, you, you know, dudes that we know, like dudes like myself who know personally, we wouldn't even think about a church. Because I look and I go, okay, well, Mike are going. And I know Mike, he ain't about to, he ain't, it ain't just about him, me knowing him from the other life. It's about, I know him as a man, how he conduct himself. See, he don't just go to church on Sunday and play the game. Where I'm, look, y'all, 
posting it all. Look at look at what I'm doing. I'm in church. Ooh, he don't do that. Right. I watch how he walk. I watch how he carry himself. That's what it's supposed to be. And people laugh. And I go like this. I'm like, okay, well, dog, I know you. I'm not saying you specific, but I got to do what I look at. And I go like, dog, I know you. You cheat on your wife. Right. Mm-hmm. You you do all of this stuff that the Bible say you ain't supposed to do. And you've been, and everybody think you've been a stand-up dude your whole life. I know better. But I got a partner over here who been in the mud, got it out the mud. I don't know what made him go to find God. And at first, I said, he didn't know. I told him. I sat mm. back and I watched. Okay. Because I got to know if this is fake mm. or this is real because there's a lot of fake. Right. Mm-hmm. Hell, the pastor that buried me and my ex-wife fake. I call mm. him out, Pastor Bill. He know. Come on, man. Pimping in the pool pit is real. So mm. I sat there and I watched. I said, I, he kept, he was on me, dude. But I know people go to church in the beginning today. And they all gassed up, but then they fall off in a couple of months, right or wrong. Mm. Okay, no. Michael been doing this for real. For, and I'm not, forget the church. This, the humble under him, everything else. Mm-hmm. Everybody told him he couldn't. I used to get mad at him and push. Hey, man, what I used to take. Yeah. And I still say, man, keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Keep pushing. Keep going. Guess what? I might not have been a part of it, but that's his dream. Mm-hmm. Man, quit it. Keep going. Mm-hmm. And the dudes who acted like they wanted to be up on with him, a lot of them fell off. Mm-hmm. I don't care if y'all see this and get mad. Y'all know y'all fell off and y'all know you was wrong. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you what God loves since y'all go mm-hmm. to church. It's called the truth. Y'all fell off. I didn't have to be around him every day. But ask him how many phone calls or texts he got or me getting on. Hey, man, what you doing? Mm-hmm. Hey, man, go get this done. Yep. Out of the blue. Hey, Mark, Mike, man, you need to go ahead and get that. Hey, what you doing? What you doing with that right there? Mm-hmm. Get, come on, man. Get it done. Get it done. I know he wanted to hang up on me. And then one mess with because he like, well, man, we talk. You just keep pushing me about about doing that. Well, come over and help me. No, that's your thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get what? He could have got me. No, let's keep you it real. You said you was going to do it, do it. Watch this. He could have got mad at me for saying, no, that ain't, that's you. Right. Get yourself right. But he go to the thing. You know why we friends? Just the same as we friends. But you know, mm-hmm. you know what really counts? Just because he's my friend don't mean I got to share his dream. Right. I can support him and push mm-hmm. him, but I ain't got to be up under him. To, his dream is his dream. Mm-hmm. Who you know support your dream like you? Yeah, exactly. Dude, in a in a business world, what do they tell you? you I work for the for the government. But if you work in the private sector, you working for somebody else to help their dream get true, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what makes you think that don't apply in everything? Mm-hmm. I love him. Yeah, I said love him for all y'all mm-hmm. looking. He my mm-hmm. dog. I love you too. Mm-hmm. But just because I love him, that's his dream. Yeah. Now, do I want to see his dream fulfilled? Damn, Skippy. But do I have to be there holding his hand every day or be in it with him for him to get his dream done? No. Right. Because mm-hmm. his vision and my vision, I don't expect him to be with me. But I know what he do. He support me. Mm-hmm. On what you doing? Okay, well, man, make it happen. The same as I do to him. Right. And people get that stuff so misconstrued that, well, because he got this dream and I'm his friend, I got to su- I got to be physically there to support his dream. No, 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 no. I'm supporting him like I do. Hey, man. Six months later, Micah, what's up? Where you at? What you mean? I'm at home. No, no, no. What you doing with the humble under him, Bertie? Is you on your thing? Yeah. Did you go get what I always ask you? Did you get the 5013 seat on yet? Yeah. That's what you always ask me. Every single time. Watch what this. I say. Oh, I'm working on I'm it. working on it. Watch this. Is it done yet? Man, I need to call the people back. <laughs> this is the con- hold on. But this is the conversation we've been having. Lately. I mean, I call him out the blue and tell him that. Yeah. Cause I forget. And, and you get sidetracked. Yeah, and, and he laughed because he'll tell me every now and then, man, I need I need to hear that from you, baby. Yeah. And I'll be like the same thing sometimes. He'll, he'll send me with something out of the blue, and I'll be like, and it could be, a, I'm going to be honest, it's not just him, it's a couple of people that, that sometimes randomly hit me up, and I go like this. God must have been on it because he knew I woke up with violence today. Mm-hmm. And he had dude them call me or text me and say something. 
to make me go dial it back. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, and the whole world getting soft, yeah. in my opinion. Like, I don't do skinny jeans. I don't think a man and a woman should fight over a pair of pants in the morning. <laughs> don't make sense to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it don't make sense. If you and your girl got to argue over them pants, how she know who the man in the house is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What y'all gonna take turns with somebody break in to see who go get it? Come on, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, but but realistic, <laughs> the world has gotten so soft, and I mean this. There's no threat of violence amongst men anymore. That mm. people feel like they can disrespect you because mm. if you retaliate or, or act out in your natural nature, then everybody want to cancel you and tell you mm -hmm. you're wrong. Now I'm mm. a Cro Magnum old school guy. Whatever you say to me. Type on, fa on Facebook, Instagram, anything you do, I'm ho I hold you completely accountable for your words. Mm -hmm. As a man, mm -hmm. I don't care if you type them, text them. If you said it, you're gonna stand on it because I'm gonna expect it. Think y'all, but a lot of people out there in the world think this man because it's been times. I that's how I, I he knows I'm by nature I'm aggressive anyway. Like, it don't take much to set me off, do it? No. Mm -hmm. I fight to keep it locked in. So when I see dudes, dis when I see men disrespecting men, it bothers me. Like, for me, I don't care if you're 12 or 100. You get my respect because I, I demand it back. As long as you've known me, Micah, and you've met me before, how many people you ever really see me around? How many people you ever seen in the car with me? I stay, you know why I stay by myself so much? Even when I lived here, did you really see me? Mm -hmm. Most of the time I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. Here's the reason why. One, if I ain't got a lot of people around me, I don't have to worry about people. Because I I trust everybody to be who they are. It's my job to decide how I deal with you. But if I don't have you, a lot of people around me, I don't have to worry about anything. I only got to worry about what? Me. And then I know what I'm going to do. Because, see, mm -hmm. as much as I love him, my sisters, my other brothers, the people who are close to me, you know why I can't be around them all the time? Why, why I don't any, even my, my daughters who are grown, you know why they can't really ride with me and be around me too much? And, and, say, and he know the same goal for his daughters because I'd be ready to jump out the car and push up at a school mm -hmm. <laughs> because I know what I'm going to do if mm -hmm. somebody hurts Disrespect the people I care about. See, for me, I don't. He know, he, and he let he 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 got a. Mm -hmm. He him and my older sister, they got to pull me in, because I'm that dude that honestly, I I, I firmly believe that if, when you hurt somebody close to me, you hurt me too. And I don't have a I don't have a a a, a medium. You know how some people got a medium how they deal with stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, he he gets more mad than I get mad at situations sometimes. Yeah, it's so for me. It's what do you want to do? What do you want to do, man? man? It ain't no big deal. No, nah, man, no, it ain't. I'm like, I, nah, man, <laughs> it ain't no big deal. Sorry. One time, what my I don't know. She was crying. You know, it might have been first boyfriend maybe yeah. back when she was younger. But oh, I want Chloe. To, oh man, yeah. we want to go. Yeah, it was Chloe. Yeah. I want to go to the school, get the little boy, get his mama, get his daddy, everybody. He even made my niece cry. Y'all got life, man. I don't care you. You bring, they kids. It's the first love. I don't care nothing about that. My niece crying, man. We need to go get everybody. <laughs> yeah. Let's go blow the house up. You know, that's how I feel. Yeah. So it's easy for me to be by myself. Now, I do believe is the problem with society is is we've got away from roles as men and women. The L the alphabet people like David Chappelle call them LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. They run the world. Mm -hmm. People don't want to admit this. Guess what? I'm so glad. Did y'all see the the young boy who turned into a who? I'm see. I can't be political. Y'all see the dude who went from being a dude to being a girl that's a swimmer. Mm -hmm. Y'all didn't see that? Mm -hmm. And he won the women's NCAA swim thing and all the women. See, I, I'm not with that either, man. That ain't right. You know what? I don't believe it, <clears> but you know why I'm so for it and I love it because now. See, the women's movement is, is what backed the LGBT and the gay stuff, all the, the feminist Right. Now, so now you want equality? 
Now you got the dude switching up, going to be women, to compete against the women, and they winning. And you saying, oh, no, that's not right to transgender. He used to be a guy. Equality does not. No. Equal is equal. All right. I'm with you. I mean, I'm a, I got three girls. I ain't got sons. But I'll tell you this. I tell my girls, life ain't, first of all, as a black man, life ain't fair. As a man, don't nobody care about how a man feel. All they care about is, are you paying the bills? Are you on, are you doing what you're supposed to? When's the last time? And I'm and I'm not saying this to be mean to women. I'm just being honest. If a woman cries or something is wrong, oh, she's having a bad day. We expected to hold her, babe. It's gonna be okay, whatever. But when you having a bad day, as soon as you if you have a bad day at work and you walk in the house, does anybody care? Mm-hmm. They still you still be strong, right? Because you got to listen what was wrong with their day. Mm-hmm. But when was the last time? I don't care if it, I, I, my kids as much as I love them. Guess what? Ask one of them when was the last time they called your daddy and said, Daddy, I love you. How you doing? Are here, you okay? Here we go. Ain't happened. But they'll mm-hmm. ask, call dad and ask him for some money. Won't it? Mm-hmm. They'll call dad and ask him for a ride. So they don't care about my mental health or my emotional state. <laughs> but that's what the world done taught them. Yeah. So guess what? Don't be mad when I tell you, huh, okay, since you equal, pay your own bills. Matter of fact, Pay your own bill. Get when, when you, your own money now. There you go. No, for real. E- equality is equality. Personally, if... if Man, I, I be battling. So, my uh, Tristan, you seen Tristan. He's here. He's 22. I'm an adult, right? My is 18. I'm I'm grown. I go to college. Man, I had to tell both of them the other day. I said, look, yes, Tristan, you're 21. You're, you're an adult. Maya, you're 18. You're an adult. But we ain't equals in this house. Y'all still gonna pick up your room. Oh, y'all can pay rent. He nice, boy. He nice. He nice is all I uh, I let y'all be have your freedom as an adult. Y'all always have a place in my home, but we ain't equals around here. I'm still the king of the castle. Yeah, pick your pick your clothes up. <laughs> That's the cultural difference between us right there. I mean, I might have used some other choice words. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, on, but but that's the cultural dis- difference right there. Yeah. See? They feel comfortable to come to him and tell him that they grown in a house that they live in that he pay for, that all they do is eat, sleep, and crap. Yeah. Because I don't want to say the other word, but even though it's yeah. my name. Okay, guess what? And he going to do the nice, he going to talk to him regularly. I'm going to look at him and say, you grown? Grown people pay their own mm-hmm. bills in their own house, can do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, you grown? Okay. That go this bill. He go this. Matter of fact, we're gonna break down. He go he go bills for everybody. Cause grown people pay their way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna respect you as an adult because you are of legal age to do stuff. But this house ain't a democracy. <laughs> this is this, this is a dictatorship. Yeah. If you can be here, I'm never gonna tell you you gotta leave until you get married and get your own. Mm-hmm. But as long as you up in here, here are the rules, here's what you gotta do. And if you can't do that, touch the ground. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day. And it was the same way when I grew up. Tough love. I chose to leave. Because mm-hmm. you wanted you wanted to be the man. And guess what? But if we knew what we knew then, we'd have stayed. Mm-hmm. We'd have shut up and stayed at home mm-hmm. and lived by the parents' rules. But nowadays, I'm I'm guilty as well as he is because I'm a sucker when it comes mm-hmm. to my baby. Mm-hmm. He know I don't yeah. do. Guess what? We want to give them so much that we didn't have and we want them to live such a good life and be better. We don't hold them accountable for nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me and my daughter Madison are into it right now. I don't want to hear about your anxiety and your mental health. Mm-hmm. You know why? The only time that stuff kick in is when you don't get your way, mm-hmm. and that's because your mama wouldn't let me whoop that butt like she should have, or set you in that corner. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, everybody sit here and talking about uh, mental health, anxiety. Uh, my mm-hmm. emotional well-being. All that is is lack of accountability and responsibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing. I work. You know, I was a supervisor at juvenile detention center. I'm gonna tell you, the kids wasn't bad. It was the parenting. Well, look, not only that, it's like with the anxiety and the feelings, all that. Okay, that's cool. But you're still responsible for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're not. Nobody else is responsible for you. Like how you feel. 
You Cat me? Williams, how can I tell you how to feel about right. you? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I open the door for my child, and I know you got children. We all do this. I don't want to whoop you. I really don't even want to discipline you. What I want to do is, is have open dialogue to where it's honest communication. Because if I do something that hurts you, come and tell me. We can talk right. about it. Mm-hmm. But if you don't tell me and you walk around with an attitude mad, how you mad at me when I don't know? Right. Because mm-hmm. if at the end of the day, if you do something to bother me, as a man, you know what I'm going to do? Hey, man, that right there really wasn't cool. You know what I'm saying? And you're going, well, what you mean? Man, because it bothered me in this way. Don't make me weak. It's saying I respect you and have enough mm-hmm. caring for you as a person. Right. And I'm going to tell you because I'm emotionally invested or I'm invested in you. To the point where I feel like I should be able to talk to you about this. Mm-hmm. And if I can't, then that means it's a problem. Mm-hmm. If, it's, if if I can't talk to you as my friend about how you make me feel without you thinking it make me weak or, or looking at it in that in that kind of a way, then I don't really need to be around you. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. at that point. We're getting close. We got to wrap it up. My camera dying again. <laughs> see what happened? I'm gonna tell oh look, yeah. we started on goals. Yeah. So look, mm-hmm. he brought one up. We ended on goals. Whatever yeah. that thing's called, C O one five three C B E K, whatever it's yeah. called. You know what I mean? We're gonna do a series. Five hundred one three C. How long it's gonna take me to do that? We're gonna do a series. Goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My goals Everybody hold right Micah here. accountable to get yeah. that thing done. Five hundred one three C. Y'all hit the hummies <laughs> and make him do it, please. <laughs> Let's right. go. Oh, yeah.